This is tutorial 5-2 GIS tutorial workbook 3. In this tutorial we're going to be creating geometric networks. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be starting in our catalog and this is where we're going to be for about half the tutorial. And what we're going to do is open up data folder and we're going to click on the geometric networks and we're going to right click and copy it. And we're going to paste the copy into our My Answers folder. And the reason we're doing this is so we don't, if we make a mistake, we can just delete this and start over. So we're going to open up this geometric network, open up sewer network. We have two files in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that data set, sewer network, go to new and geometric network. Now this is a little wizard explaining what this is. And then we're going to name our network Sewer Network underscore O Lender. Keep that no. Check both of these because we want them associated with each other. And in here, we're going to make sewer connections a sink or a source. What that means is that they are the something's flowing from them or to them. Uh, and we're going to click next. And here is if we had any weights uh, saying what, if anything affected whether, like the, the sewer lines, whether diameter of the pipe came into effect. That's how these weights would work. But we're not going to do anything like that for this right now. This is a brief summary of what we've done. Just click finish. Okay, now that this is here, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on Sewer Network Blender and go to Properties. And in here, we're going to be wanting to work with the Connectivity tab. And here, we're going to make rules for our connectors and our pipes. Uh, so we're going to come in here and choose Sewer Lines. And what we're going to do is, by doing this, creating the files will be so much quicker. Um, so we're going to choose residential service lines first and work with them. And in here, we're going to expand sewer networks. And residential service lines will only connect to collection lateral lines. And then in the right box over here, junction subtypes, we're going to open up sewer connectors. And these will be service connectors. And little d stands for default. Uh, so it'll always automatically assign those. You can assign more and then go in and change the few that are the oddball out. But for this, we're just going to leave it as that. Actually, uh, and we're also going to choose manhole. And then we're going to choose sewer network hole under junctions. Then in over here, we're going to open up sewer connectors on the left, and we're going to click on service cleanout. And then we're going to right click and set that as the default. Then we're going to click Apply. Now we're going to come up here and we're going to choose Collection Lateral Lines. And then we're going to go over here in the left panel. We're going to connect, click on the Collection Lateral Lines because lateral or the connection, uh, the Collection Lateral Line can connect to all three. But right now we're just going to work with the rules we have for collection lateral line. And you may have noticed some of these things are already checked. That's because those rules were assigned when we were doing this one. So we're just adding more rules. Now in the right box, we're going to select manhole covers and make sure that it's the default setting. We're also going to choose connect service connector and sewer network. Then we're going to click apply. Then we're going to come back over here in the left and we're going to choose some main line 
uh, rules. So back over in the, the right, we're going to choose main tab as the default, and then sewer network Olender junctions, then click apply. Then we go back to the left, scroll down a little bit, and we're going to make manhole the default. And then we're going to click uh, City Cleanout, just to have it as a option. And then we're going to click Apply. Then we're going to come up here, click on Main Line. And then up here, we're going to choose Main Line, because a Main Line can connect to a Main Line. But it cannot connect to a residential service line. Then over on the right, we're going to choose inline connector sleeve and make sure that it's the default. Then we're going to also choose uh, the sewer network. And if you open that up, it's just the one thing, so you don't even have to expand that one. When that's done, you're just going to click apply. Then you're going to come over here. You're going to choose manholes again for this one and set it as the default. Then you're going to click apply. So all these rules will make, they seem like it's taking a long time to do this and it's kind of confusing. But when we start doing this, you'll understand why this is actually a huge time saver. And if you know the rules, like someone that's working in this industry will know these rules, this wouldn't be that difficult for them. So just click OK, close that. And we're done with our catalog, so we can just shut that off. Now you want to open up Mark, ArcMap and open up Tutorial 2 dash, or Tutorial 5 2. And we're going to add a new layer. Uh, group layer. And we're going to name this network group. And you're going to right click that uh, group layer and you're going to add data right to it. And you're going to open up the sewer network and you're going to click on sewer network Olender and just add that. We've added it, but what we want to do is we want to give it um, this kind of symbology, and rather than go in and do it manually, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cheat, and we're going to right click and go to properties. We're going to import that from sewer connector, and this sewer connector is actually this one down here. So we're going to click OK, connector type, OK, and it's changed. So then we click OK, and we're going to do the same thing for sewer lines. Make sure that's like that, and click OK. OK again. Um, you can get rid of Symbology Group because um, it can be very confusing. Because if you come over here, you have Sewer Line, Sewer Line, Sewer Connector, Sewer Connectors. You're not sure which one you're talking about. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And we can close this guy because we're not going to be seeing him. And this you can leave open if you want. So we're, now we're going to set up our edit session. And the first thing we're going to do is load our bookmark. So we'll go to manage bookmarks, load, go down to sewer one, open, and right in here you can just click zoom to, and you just close it. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be making this yellow line is the residential service line, and these, oh wait, actually no, it's backwards. This is the co uh, collection lateral line. This is the residential service line. It's kind of backwards from what they have over here. So we're going to start an editing session.
And because I got rid of the symbology one, it didn't appear. Um, the conflict didn't appear. So if I come over and create features, here's all the features that I can do. And I'm going to just come over here. You can unselect this guy so he'll stay out of here. And uh, if I open it up again, I don't know if he's still there. Oh well, um, he's not really that much in the way. Make sure if it pops up saying to choose what geo database, make sure you're doing the one in my answers. If you don't, you can really screw up your uh, your thing, and you might have to reload your data disk if you make a big enough mistake. So we're going to click on this guy right here, collection lateral line. And down here we have our line construction. So you're just going to want to click up here and click right down to here. And some of you might be tempted to just go in and finish the rest of this, but you don't want to do that. You want to right click, finish sketch. And what it did was it gave us our manhole covers. So then they want us just to go in and continue doing it. Doing it. Uh, to save time, I'm just going to use the function F2 uh, to finish my sketches. You can continue to right click if you want. Uh, this is just a little bit quicker for me. And then I'm going to zoom out because this one is, if you remember from the last tutorial, a slightly curved one. Click here, use the end point arc segment, click down here, and then you're just going to try as best as you can to add that, and then have to. Then make sure you go right back to your straight line. Now this one is tricky, um, and this is why I'm why we're doing the finished sketch rather than just do the whole thing and hope they pop up where they're going to be. We're gonna click here, then click here. As you can see, it kind of curves. Um, if you wanted to, that's kind of good enough. But if you wanted a really good curve, you could use the endpoint. Seeing that this is just an exercise, I'm just gonna use this one. So I'm going to click again. So I've clicked tw three times um, here at the start, right here, and then I did this slight little curve. So I'm going to finish my sketch, and as you can see, it made the points, or the, the sewer, just at the end and start point. So we're going to uh, right-click on sewer lines. We're going to zoom to layer. And I'm going to turn off this guy right here and clear my selection. So I didn't do too bad of a job, um, I think. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and go to bookmarks, go to sewer one, and we're going to turn back on our nice little backdrop. And we're going to do residential service line. And we're going to click up here and snap it to the, the edge and our sketch. And as you can see, we have the symbol for the cleanout, service cleanout, and the service connector. Now, if you're not snapping to the lines, you just want to go up to editor, snapping, snapping toolbar, and make sure these are all on. Uh, one of the tutorials had you turn them off and didn't tell you to turn it back on. Probably as a test to see if you knew how to do it.
Now, this is an interesting one, because it goes straight to this, the manhole cover. So, when I finish my sketch, it does not place a service connector. That's because the rules dictate that that wouldn't happen. We're going to connect this to this. Now this one looks like it's going to the manhole cover, but it's not. It's going really close to it. And just like we did at that one, these are not going to override the manhole cover. Oh, and I forgot to place a line. So I'm just going to go in to my collection. There we go. All better. So I'm going to clear my selection and I'm going to zoom out, look at my handiwork. And it looks pretty close to what the, the book has. Uh, mine are a little bit off maybe, but you know, it's just a, a tutorial. Now what they want us to do is use the select tool. And they want us to highlight everything. Then they want us to go up to Editor, and there's this cool little tool called Validate Features. And if you read the little box that pops up when I hover over it, it will ch test the geometric network con connectivity rules. And it says there's two features that are invalid, and that's these guys down here that they highlight. So if we click OK, go to Selection. Uh, actually, no, we'll just zoom in. Now, the reason it came up that way is because, well, we'll see what the computer has to say first and then go into it more. So we're going to clear our selection and just choose one of them, Editor, Validate Feature. And it comes up with this explanation. Sewer lines edge feature subtype residential service line may not connect to the sewer line edge feature subtype residential service line via the connect Sewer connectors, junction feature, subtypes, manholes. Um, so basically, it's one of those odd things. It's the exception that proves the rule or whatever. Um, based on the rules that we said, it shouldn't happen, but in reality, it does happen. So we're just going to ignore these. So we're just going to clear. And then we're going to zoom out back to this guy. Now what we're going to do is establish flow. So we're going to go back to sewer, sewer 1. And we're going to choose the northmost manhole. And then we're going to open up our attribute. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this guy a sink. That means everything's going to flow into him. Uh, once that's done, you just click X. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use our, net, or our utility network analyst tool. Now, you do not need the network 
extension to use this toolbar. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little button here, set flow direction. Then we're going to go to the flow menu here. We're going to go to properties. We're going to make sure it's uh, determinate flow. Then we're going to click on this guy. And we're going to make them down to 7. Then we're going to click OK. Then we're going to drop this guy again. And we're going to display arrows. And then we're going to zoom out. And as you can see, there's little arrows pointing which way the water is going to go. So it goes down here, it flows in from the houses, goes into this tube, it goes all the way up here, and then deposits here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to perform a trace. Uh, it's a cool little feature. So we're just going to clear our selection. And these, this is the flag menu. Uh, if you open it, you can add a junction flag, add an edge flag, uh, a barrier, or an edge barrier. These are actually pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add this guy right here. And we're going to choose one of these houses. Uh, I'll choose this guy. It's not really going to matter because it's not like it can go in some weird direction. And then we're going to hit oh, I believe this guy has to be selected as well. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it does not have to be selected. But we do have to have trace downstream. And then we can solve. Now nothing happened. Um, for me, the only way to get this to work was to stop editing and save my edits. And you can see that a line appeared with arrows pointing which way the flow is. Now it's kind of hard to see. So they show us a way to go in and we can change how we see it. So we're going to go to Analysis, Options, Results. And here you could change the color if you wanted to, but what they're going to do is have a selection. We're just going to click OK, and then hit Solution again, and it highlights everything. Um, so, and another cool thing is, and we'll go more into this and how it's helpful, open up the attribute table, and it tells us which pipes are the ones actually doing it. And you can go in and you can actually figure out like how far it's traveling and then the other one, how long it's going to take. So we're going to clear our selection. And we're going to add a new layer, group layer. And we're going to name this guy Water Utility Group. And we're going to add some data to him. And we're going to add the entire water distribution. And you can close fittings. You can turn off network group and shrink it. And you can turn off landing base map layer. Um, and here, clear flags. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to bookmarks, we're going to manage them, and we're going to load a new one. And it's going to be water one, so it's all the way at the bottom. Zoom two, and then X out of here. I don't know why those aren't disappearing, but we'll just forget that they're there. 
I think it's just something wrong with the, the trace. Or the, the draw feature. Because it's right here. Yep, and they're still there. Ah, there we go. They're gone now. So you want to change your utility network analyst to water distribution network. And we're going to be using our water one bookmark. And we're going to turn off fittings and water distribution junction. And we're going to start a new editing session. And we're going to now change the method to find path. And they want you to choose two of the points on here and one up here and then one down here and it's going to find a path. So let's zoom in up here. I find zooming in is much better than trying to just pick a little dot out of like nowhere. So choose our little flag and I'm going to place it. If you don't like where you place it, just go click on there and clear flags. Okay, so I'm going to put one there. Then I'm going to here and place one right there. Zoom out. So I have a flag down here and I have a flag up there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit salt. And I don't think I clicked on the proper things. So I'm just going to come in here, your flags, and I'm just going to try it again. Now, as you can see, it found a path. And I'm going to show you something really cool, and then I'm going to go back to the tutorial. Um, now that we see where it chose it, if we click here, you know, it, it picks the same path. But what I want to do is. unselect everything and I know it's using this right here as a path so I want to put a barrier there and what this will do is it will prevent it from using that path so you could actually use this Like, uh, for traffic reasons, say you had to shut off uh, a street, you'd be able to determine what routes are better suited for, like, maybe, like, ambulances to use or police to use for emergencies. So this is a really cool feature. Um, now I'm going to go in and clear barriers, and then I'm going to run it again. 
Now because we're using the selection, we can go in here, open up our uh, attributes, go over to selected features, and it tells us both the length and the time for those. So I'm going to go in here, use a sticky note, and find out the length that it's using. Because um, we're going to, in the next one, we're going to use weights to determine, to, to show the difference. So, 47.8. And you have to also do it to the mains. these numbers up. So we've got 6871.4 plus So it take it went 21,873.4. I'm thinking that's in feet. And it's it took 83.3 minutes for that flow to get from point A to point B. Now we're going to take weights into effect. Um, and to do that, we're going to go to analysis options, weights, and we're going to change it from none to flow rate, and none to flow rate again. Click apply, and OK. Then we hit solver, and as you can see, it used this route, which looks like the one that would have been used if I kept that blocker there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up attribute table and record these numbers. Now, if you're doing this and your results come out to where the weight one took longer, I got that about half the time I've done this. So it's uh if it happens to you, don't freak out. You probably just picked a few that, you know math says it should work out, but it just doesn't. Because I guess uh even though it has better flow, I guess it's just a little bit too long still. So we got 6217.4 plus 18. So we're going about 3,000 more feet. And 
but we saved quite a bit of time. Uh, we went from 87.3 minutes to 74.6 minutes. And that's the first time I actually got a difference that big. The last time it was all, like, it was barely much time at all. Uh, and then one time it was actually more time by using the weights. So, feel free to play around with that. It's a pretty cool tool. Uh, try using the blockers again. Uh, those things are pretty cool. The last thing we have to do for this tutorial is we're going to turn off the utility network analyst. Uh, and we're going to shut this off. We're going to turn this back on, this back on. And we're going to zoom to our little layer here. Those extra points, we're just going to remove this. There, that gets rid of those. Uh, those points, I don't know why it's that, that error keeps occurring uh, on this tutorial. But if those dots don't go away and they annoy you, you can just remove that layer because we're done with it. So we're going to go to bookmarks and add yet another bookmark. So we're going to load... And we're going to add Super 2, and we're going to zoom to it. And you're not really messing out on anything. It's pretty much bookmark 1, but just zoomed in a little bit more. Now, the scenario here is that these two sewers, or manhole covers, are supposed to be like here and here, right over the P's. So what we're going to do is we're going to move them. And you're going to make sure you select both of these lines. You can do that by holding down the shift button. And then you just click and drag. So right about there. And then you can just refresh. And what it did was it moved everything else associated with them along with it. So even if there's a small error, you can easily fix it without having to fix everything else. So that's another neat trick about having the networks. And that's it for this tutorial.